Thank you for being here. I know there is a, a lot of great talks out there, so I appreciate it. Um, just, just to start, I want to know really quick uh, how many are designers and developers? Designers and developers? A little bit of both? All right. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about uh, style guide driven development. Uh, this is uh, this is a topic that comes from uh, way back when we used to do only print in design. Uh, so, but before I get into the topic, let me just introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jose Pimienta. I'm a UI engineer and co-founder at a small uh, agency called Alpis. We do mostly software development and design from branding to UX, anything. So. Um, my username uh, is on the screen. You can find me anywhere by it. And my email address, if you have any question or concern, just hit me up. So what's a style guide? Well, yesterday, or in the past, it was pretty much uh, a book that we would create every time that we would create a, a brand or an interface or any software, we will documentate the way to use whatever we created in paper. Uh, this is really pretty, and we can have a PDF or a book around the office, but it's not really scalable, especially today that we live in the world uh, of fast development, and everything changes every day. So, so today, we have uh, living style guides, or the concept comes from uh, all your components or your, your brand and your uh, style sheets and everything lives in code. So that's why it's living and in reality uh, living is a, it's a relative concept so you will see later. Uh, this is a special uh, example from Pivotal Labs. They created their uh, style guide and shared it with the world as a great example. Uh, feel free, I think I have the link later to go in and explore it. It's amazing, you can learn a lot of, about it. And I believe it's open source, so even better. So why is it important to create a style guide? So um, user interfaces are getting more complex every day, so uh, having a blueprint of what you're building or what you want to achieve uh, is extremely important. So reducing that complexity, complexity for you and for anybody that will join or be in your team in the future is very important. Also, uh, in the QA process, the quality assurance, uh, you have something that you can hold on to and say, all right, you build this new uh, application and it doesn't really meet the standards that we set at the beginning of the project. So. Also, the redundancy, uh, how many times have you been in a website or an application or anywhere, and you have one button, and then you have another one, and you have 20 buttons that look all different, and they all do the same. So why, that's headache for the user, and that's headache for the developer, because every time, oh, I need a button, I need to create it. No, just go grab the line of code for a button, add the functionality, and it looks the same everywhere, it behaves the same, so everybody's happy. Uh, all your design that you go through, uh, we do a lot of uh, UX design and things like that. At the beginning, it's very important to design all the elements that you need, especially that they will evolve and they will create all other new elements in the future. So all that design, once you put it in your style guide, is pretty much code. Uh, you can pretty much throw away the PSD or whatever you, you have because from now on you're going to make the changes right there. Or you can just start and code in the first place. So this creates a more maintainable uh, code base. Uh, we have a lot of overhead uh, every time we create an application and most of the time you see like there's a very beautiful uh, open so source software and it works perfect, but after a while, if it's not easy to maintain, 
a lot of people just abandon it and it and, and end up dying. So uh, you can pay attention. Uh, there was a talk about performance, which was really good. Uh, performance budget is setting uh, the, your standard for performance. You're going to say, all right, I want my page or my application to load in two seconds maximum. So you can design all your elements to uh, have a really lightweight uh, components to it so your performance increases and you can uh, test your uh, how your application behaves it, every time you make a change. So also uh, rapid prototyping uh, we all I don't know if you're familiar with Bootstrap or all the frameworks like uh, uh, Semantic UI and uh, Foundation we all use it for rap rapid prototyping uh, after you do your own style guide, hey, you have your own rapid prototyping tool. And it's very important because at the end, since it's yours, you don't have to modify it. You go from prototype to uh, product faster. So. so what is usually included in, in a style guide? So we have the basic elements, meaning buttons and form elements, typography, uh, any type of pattern that you, f you see in your application repeating and repeating. For example, uh, if, you, if you're working in a big project and everybody refers to the top part as that's the header, like you call it by a noun or the footer, I think that's something that you can move to your style guide and make sure that it's consistent across all, all of the, the views or the pages of, of your project. Uh, you have all the style, the styles. Uh, you have, uh, you can set the way that the styles are gonna be written from now on, and that will create a better code base, a more understandable, a more standard. Uh, when you onboard a new person to your team, they only have to learn one thing, not 20 styles of code. Uh, you can add notes for development. You can have. Uh, like your internal wiki, you can put it in your style guide just to inform everybody how to use each element and if there is a known, uh, a known issue that you cannot fix right now, you can put it there, so. Uh, you, just like in the old paper uh, design, uh, design guidelines, you can show the colors of your brand or your project, which are very important because we all see colors different, but at the end, if you have one number, everybody makes sure that it's following the same. So uh, grid systems, if we start talking about grid system, we can be here until tomorrow. There is a, a million of them and a million ways to uh, achieve it. Uh, I would recommend to look into Flexbox. I think that is stuck. I don't know if it's today or tomorrow. It will be really nice. Uh, you can also localize uh, your code. Uh, if you create your components to be uh, localizable, like you can translate them and uh, it will be really uh, intuitive to change the language of your application uh, once you get to that point. Uh, I found this quote, it's by Gina at, on Twitter. She's a lead designer. and. At Salesforce, they have a great style guide, great design team. It's amazing that they were able to get a whole group of very talented people and then uh, put them to work on this. Uh, zombie style guides is funny, but it's true. Like, you can create it today, and if you don't maintain it, if you don't make it part of your progress every day, that you create a new uh, element, you say, all right, this should be a, an element that we'll reuse. Let's add it to the style guide, let's, let's change it, let's improve it. Uh, they will die and they will eat your brains, just like that. <laughs> I like zombies, but I don't like that zombie. <laughs> so really quick uh, examples, like amazing, I mentioned uh, Salesforce and people to Labs. Uh, also, we have uh, Lonely Planet and Mailchimp. These companies are very, very nice in the way that they're big and they show what they're doing. So we can all learn from uh, these uh, 
examples. All this, uh, I'll tweet the link to the slides, but I'm sure uh, the conference will do the same. So, uh, but if you search for the name of the company, StyleGuide is right there. So, there is a million tools that you can use to create uh, style guides today. Uh, these are only a few. Uh, hologram, for example, was created by Tulia. Trulia, the uh, real estate company, after they did the same process. They went through all their code and created a style guide for themselves. And they realized that uh, they did a lot of good, uh, a good work. So they created this tool. It allows you to scaffold uh, a style guide really quick. And then from there, you can build your own. In, even in, when you go to the examples, the Pivotal Labs is actually built on top of uh, Hologram. So check it out. Uh, Pattern Labs, uh, Pattern Lab it was created uh, as the tool to show about atomic design. Anybody familiar with atomic, atomic design? So this is a philosophy uh, that, was, that surfaced around 2013, and it's very interesting where you would create, uh, if you borrowing from physics or, or chemistry, you have an atom, and then you have a molecule, and then you have organisms. In this case, you will be like, all right, let's create an atom, which will be a button. And then you have other atoms that are like a text a input and things like that. Then you can create a molecule where it's, uh, you're logging a form. That logging form is made with atoms. And then you can create an organism, which could be your logging page, which is, uh, is formed by other elements and the form that you created. So it's very easy to follow, and it's a very nice uh, philosophy. So Pattern Lab was created exactly for this. Uh, there is a whole article, and I think there is a book about it, uh, which is very interesting. I highly recommend it. Uh, Frontify, is a, I think it's a paid solution. They have a free version. Uh, if you don't want to deal with code, if you just want to create that for yourself or for your your marketing team, they can go ahead and edit it uh, in a WYSIWYG type of interface. Uh, they don't pay me to say that, but it's good. So, <laughs> uh, also there are a lot of them that are parts your CSS files. Uh, this all started with uh, KC KSS where you would write the comment before your implementation of the style sheet and saying like, hey, okay, this is the name of the, the element, this is the way we're gonna use it, and this is any uh, description of it. So once you run KSS, which they have be, it has been transformed into grunt uh, tasks and node packages and all that, so once you run that, it will create pages with that information that you put in the in your source code, so you don't have to go ahead and create your own pages to describe this. It your source code will generate the pages for you, and you can create a template which will uh, be uh, the base of your style guide. So I created a quick demo. Uh, I know this is a WordPress conference. Uh, I'm not talking a lot about WordPress. I'm sorry, but uh, either way, this is a practice that you can do in any project, WordPress or not. Uh, I went to uh, CodePen and created a small style guide. Let me see if I have it here. So uh, our colors, I just defined them the first place, I'm using SAS as a preprocessor, and then I went ahead and uh, defined the, the typography that we use. And uh, the, if you look at the HTML, it's very simple. Uh, just putting straight uh, markup there that is nothing fancy, but the CSS will style that. Uh, Every time that I change, it doesn't matter if I put the red 
to be green, it should update. And you can do changes. Once you do your work one time for one client or one website, one application, then you can say, all right, I adapted my code for this brand. Now I can have a new brand that I have to work with. I have the brand elements that I want to incorporate to my, my site. So I just have to change the variables, change the way that they look. If there is a specific look, our logo is a triangle. That's why instead of using square to use a, to show a swash, I just build a triangle, but you can build anything you want. Mm -hmm. So um, like that, you can go ahead and uh, create all the buttons and all the form elements. I did this you know, very quick just to show the, the process. Uh, this will allow you to uh, grab this CSS and use it in your site, at, at least at the beginning. If you keep it, uh, if you keep maintaining it, you can reuse it as many times as you like. And if there is a new tendency in the market to do something fa fancy with your styles, or you can go ahead and update it, and then for you can push that change to all the projects at the same time if you have it well organized. So, uh, thank you. That's about what I had. If I will take questions now, I don't know how much time I have. Well, that was fast. <laughs> Okay, if you want to create one page that you're going to do, let's say, for homework, and you will never use it again, or it's something extremely, uh, extremely uh, profound that is new, you might not need it. If you're a at a hackathon that you want to do something really fast, you know, there I wouldn't do it. But if you are in any project, it's a good practice because it will keep you in line in terms of uh, maintaining the style throughout all the project. And you can define anything from spaces to you know, the colors, anything, and that can carry from project to project. Uh, I think it's a good practice, and there are some advocates out there that say create a style guide for each project. But it's a very good question. At the end, it's a uh, it's a preference. For, for your, for your clients, we try to we try to show them the importance of it because at the end, uh, when we create all the code and we give it to them, uh, they own the code. If they want to go somewhere else and they don't have a structure, somebody else will try to reinvent the wheel, which it was there already in the first place. So showing them the importance of it uh, will allow you to, you know make more money because you're showing them value in your work and they will come back and they will be happy because the, the, their code is better structured for their future. Just really quick, type of client and industry? Sorry? What type of client and industry? Um, All right, so the thing is that a lot of people that just want to get th things out, they don't see the value because you're moving really fast. But they don't see that you're going dis to do this same type of work over and over and over again. And you, every time you have to go and redo it. You can use a solution that is there and is going to give you a nice looking button, but making your own and being able to reuse it in every product, spending the time now is going to be uh, exponentially uh, valuable. So uh, for us, uh, you can create an interface with just without style sheets or at all, and you can have a functional uh, application on the browser, but 
it's not styled to not even be readable. If you don't have CSS, you, you can have a screen reader read it, and you will understand a little bit. But uh, we're humans, and we're really highly, highly uh, bi uh, bi visual individuals. So for us, uh, the experience is very important. If there is a client that doesn't understand it, uh, sometimes it's good to lose the client because at the end, I wouldn't put my name in something that it looks bad and put it out there and say, no, Jose made it, no. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, it's not worth my time. So. All right, so we have done a lot of uh, this type of work that the client comes to us and say, all right, I, I have this project. I need uh, a logo or a brand identity. So we end up going ahead and doing a whole branding exercise. At the end, we end up with the brand. It's living in an uh, uh, Illustrator file or something like that. That uh, We try to get give them all the colors that they will, they will need, like uh, RGB and hex and phantom and all that whatever they will need so they can be set for the future. So that will translate good if we're going to go on web. Uh, this having the brand guideline will allow you to go faster into the, the style guide of your web or application. So because uh, all the foundation is there. In this case, if you use a really uh, print only typography, uh, you have to make compromises. Uh, sometimes you have to find the best alternative of that uh, font face in the, in the web. And they have to be okay with it because at the end, <laughs> most of the time, we show something that is, lives everywhere. But if there's a client that they really want something uh, out of the extraordinary, uh, we have to show them that this will not be uh, reusable for the web. And a lot of times we have a system, yeah, I can see it on my Mac because I have a lot of fonts there, but a client in another computer might not have it. So uh, if you don't have the font in the system and you cannot distribute it over the, the wire with CDNs and things like that, uh, you have to find the good alternative for it. And the other on the other uh, side, if you have legacy software that you want to uh, turn to you know, this type of mentality, you have to start from scratch doing uh, UI inventory and see all the elements that they're using, all the, main, the elements that they really need because they can be using 20 and they only need uh, 12. Uh, and then from that, showing them little by little uh, what's the importance? They they see it, you know. At the end, if you have a, a manager's hierarchy, uh, once you show one, and they see the value that they're gonna save money in the long run, they eventually all of them will get it. So, uh, I don't know if I answered your question. It's a tool called. CodePen.io, it allows you to write HTML, any flavor, and CSS, any flavor, and JavaScript, any flavor of it, and see the, the result real time. Uh, we use it sometimes when we want to show something uh, outside, or we want, we, you get an idea, and you say, all right, I think this is doable in CSS, or any for on the web, but I'm not really sure. Instead of creating a project in my computer and all that, I can fire it up in, in the browser and go ahead and create it. And it's free, so uh, you can even send it to your phone and look at it to see if it looks good and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, a style guide, in this case, my example was only CSS. I didn't want to get into uh, creating a lot of it. But 
uh, is code. Whatever you need for your interface, uh, most of it, it will be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, if you go there, people to labs, you can see that they have React components, if you're familiar with the framework, and then CSS components. They will show you in their uh, style guide, you're a developer and you're building a simple website. You don't need React, but you can go ahead and grab that CSS element uh, and put it in your site and you have a, a green button, a red button, whatever. And then you have another developer in the same company, especially these companies are distributed. They are all over the, the world and that's how we all work today. So uh, the same company, another developer can say, all right, I need a button but I'm creating an application, I'm using React, I get the code, it all looks the same way and it's all controlled by it. That, that same CSS. Once you change it once, you can push it to your distributor of code like Bower or whatever, and then everybody gets the same version. Everybody will have a look that will represent your brand. Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah, at the end, when in compile time, you can put all those CSS in one package that is your UI library, and that you you distribute that. You don't, di or you can distribute each individual elements. At the end, is what project you're in. Uh, some people that use Symfony, for example, in PHP, uh, they like all the assets separate. So you have a folder that has buttons and things like that because at the end, Symfony will compact all of that to distribute it. Uh, but uh, yes, at the end, it's all CSS and uh, HTML. Uh, that It's being pulled from the same place. If you're using a preprocessor like SAS, LESS, Stylus, uh, since you have uh, variables with all the main components, like the colors and things like that, once you change it in one and you compile, you, all your CSS files will have the same value. No, you're. No, no, you're only, you're only having your, the style guide for your own be benefits. Yes, it's, a, it's like having a documentation. At the end, the code that you distribute or that you use in your application is the result of this exercise. It's the same source that the style guide is reading from, just like that you distribute. The style guide is just the documentation how to use your brand or your elements in anything. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah, at the end. Yes, yes. Or you have two different projects. You have this living style guide that has all your structure, how to use it, and then that CSS file is what you use to build other things. It's all there. It's all CSS. Yes. Yeah, at the end, you, you will define whatever you like. So, you mean it's a triangle? No?
No, no, no. It's all, it's all CSS. You know, all this is creating CSS. I, I only wrote HTML for the structure, and. Can you see? So I have a div with a class color, and that class color only has the structure of how my element will look. No? So you have color main will define how I'm going to style that element. In this case, uh, I put all the properties of color, which are general for all the colors, in one uh, class, and then the other one defines the color, or if it's going to have a blue shine or whatever it is for each individual cases. The shape. The shape. All right. No, 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 no. The shape is at the end. Here. That's the shape. It's a CSS trick. You're defining the border and then saying that two of them are, are just transparent, so it will fill the, the void. If you don't want to do that, if you want to put a square, let's see, hold on. Yeah, for some reason not coming out now, but I can show you on the fly. Like, you have that's a CSS shape. I initially, every box on your website is square or rectangle. So with CSS, you can make it look like an infinity loop if you like. So it's CSS has advanced a lot in the last few years after the creation of CSS3. Uh, so CSS today has variables that we didn't have that two years ago. So any other questions? Okay. It's it's good to set boundaries like at the end that comes out in your design process or you know, if you're doing things for mobile or if you're doing things for, you know, iPads or embedded uh, devices, that comes out in your process of designing each element. You have to define, all right, uh, my button usually doesn't have any padding. It's going to be just a box with text inside, but I want it to be uh, 30 pixels high because maybe I find that the optimal size for the, the UI. So in that global button class, I will define all the uh, attributes that we'll need for each button. And then you can make modifications of it. On, you, know, you can create 20 different buttons if you really need it. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have seen like Ionic and all that, like you have regular buttons and then you have full path, you know, full block buttons, it, they're only modifying the width. So, any other questions? My website? AlpisDesign.com. A L P I S Design.com. Or see me, I'll give you a business card. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>